Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon to everybody. Thank you guys uh, for tuning in. Blessings to you all. Uh, blessings to you all. Thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, I hope that everyone's having a wonderful uh, and joyous day on today. And uh, I want to definitely get into uh, something really quick. I'm not going to be here uh, long. Uh, just something that was uh, on my heart. And so I kind of want to uh, just kind of talk about uh, the level of humility and obedience, um, and which is something that is um, very serious. Um, and in this day and age, it, it seems as though there's a lack of. And so it's important. Good afternoon. Uh, shalom. Shalom. Uh, blessings to you all. Um, it, it's definitely malnourished um, in the day and age in which we live. Um, and so I want to talk about this really quick and just not going to be here long at all. Uh, but I think it's something that it's important uh, to be discussed. Um, and so it takes a level of humility. Um, to first understand that without humility, one cannot be obedient. Without humility, one cannot be obedient. Okay. It's something very important. Humility is the doorway or the gateway to obedience. And it's very important that we work on understanding with the level of humility that we ourselves were once in darkness. Uh, I think sometimes uh, we forget where the Most High has brought us from. And so um, when we forget that and fail to acknowledge um, where we came from, then we become arrogant and therefore um, we get in a position um, to cause ourselves um, to be exposed. Um, the Father isn't about exposing people unless there's a lack of humility. Um, the exposing is the grace and the compassion um, because he could merely kill you, but he decided to expose you. And with that, that's a level of grace. Um, hey, Shalom Pop, what's going on? Thanks for joining. Um, it's important that in the day and age in which we live that we exercise and we walk in a level of humility. Um, and once the level of humility is represented and displayed, then the action of obedience um, can permeate or uh, be um, a, a witnessing tool uh, to many. In today's age, we fail at having a elevated impact of humility. Um, we get entitlement thinking. We forget that we still are saved by grace um, and not of our own. Um, we tend to forget that um, we, if it had not been or if it's not for the Holy Spirit, that even one of us, we could merely turn our back on the Father. These are things that we don't even think about um, when we're, um, when we wake up every single day. So today, I just want to talk to you guys about making sure that your level of humility, make sure that it's elevated. Do not become arrogant. Do not become conceited to think for one minute 
that you arrived. Do not think for one minute that you have nothing to work on. Don't think for one minute that you are being super obedient because you only fool yourselves. You only fool yourself. You're only setting yourself up for a great fall. And so from the lens in which we as believers of Christ, as followers of Hamashiach, as those who embrace the saving of by grace, when we understand that, and we keep it in its proper perspective and understand that every single day that we wake up, it's the Father's grace and his mercy upon our lives. When we use that as fuel of humility, then when we walk around, when we teach, when we talk, when we have conversation, Shalom, uh, Yahakanah, when we look at people in their position that they're in, we always view it from the perspective of humility. We cannot allow. The thing about arrogance, arrogance will have you thinking that your own hands have gotten you in this position. The thing about arrogance, arrogance will make you think that you've arrived. Arrogance will call you, cause you to start making things happen and stamping the Father's name on it. Arrogance will cause you not to be considered of others in their walk. We should be the most humble people on the face of the planet. Those of us who say that we, we follow the Christ. Think about this for example. Think about this for a second. How humble was the son of the most high. I, I want y'all to think about, it. we talk about everything else. I want you to think about, y'all have read the scriptures. Think about how humble the Christ was. Not only how humble, but how he remained humble when people was against him. Think about that. Christ's intention when he walked was walking around here just saying, yo, let me see how many people I can stir up. Let me see how many people that I can prove wrong. In his humility, your humility says that you're resolved in Yah. Your humility says that I am resolved to the point to where no matter what people do to me or say to me or what they're doing that's wrong, I'm so resolved in the Father that I know that he will fight my battles for me. I'm so, that's humility. Arrogance says, 
I'm going to make you feel the pain that I feel. That's arrogance. Even the Christ, our Savior, they beat him, they spit on him, they called him all types of names, they mocked him, they made fun of him. And yet in his humility, because he was so resolved in who his father was and who he was in his father, he didn't have to prove anything. Even the arrogance of Pilate. Do you know that I hold the power of freeing you? That's arrogance. And Christ had to simply tell him how resolved he was in his father and how confident he was in his father. To the point to where he had to respond to the level of arrogance in this tone. He says, this world is not mine. For if it was, I can call legions of angels and they would come fight for me. He had to respond because humility checks arrogance. Humility slaps arrogance in the face. Humility creates doors for witness. Humility is the seed that can spark a change. Arrogance is destruction. Hasatan's level of arrogance terminates through his humility to the point where he thinks that he's going to win in the end even though he didn't win the beginning. Arrogance puffs up. That's what the scripture is talking about. We, we th it's not just knowledge. It's not, that's not because you can be humble with knowledge. But knowledge or with arrogance Puffers up. Second Chronicles seven and fourteen. If is a condition. If meaning that I'm going to put it in your hands, Israel. I'm not going to force you. To be humble. You're going to make the decision. To humble yourselves. Or you're going to make the decision. To remain arrogant. Whichever way you want to swing on the seesaw. Judgment will be based on. If you decided to be humble. Or arrogant. And I'm going to deal with you. Based off your. Decision. If my. People. Which are called by my name. If my people. Who run around here saying they represent me. My people who run around here saying that they represent me 
my people who run around here saying that they speak on my behalf. would display a level of humility because my people who say they speak for me don't do it in arrogance. Don't do it in arrogance. And pray. Communicate with me. Show me reverence. Show me how important it I, to, I am to you. If you say you represent me, if you say that you speak for me, then talk to me. Don't spend more time talking to everybody else. Talk to me. When you got problems, don't go calling your partner them. Don't spend more time asking others for prayer to pray for you. Then you pray to me. Then you talk to me. If you say that you represent me, you my people, and you're called by my name, then you're going to be the most humblest people on the earth and you're going to spend more time talking to me and seek my face. Seek the wisdom that I have for your life. Not seeking up wisdom from everybody else. We're talking about his people. We're not talking about people who say that they're his. People that say, people who are actually his people follow these steps because they understand that it was not them who chose him, but it was him who chose them. When you know that he chose you, this is how you approach the Most High. You don't carry his name around any kind of way. You don't talk any kind of way. You're more considerate of others than yourself. He was considerate of you that he sent his only son. His only begotten son you there can be no level higher of humility than that and if we are his people and we say we bear his name then we should be the most humble people on the face of the earth Because humility destroys arrogance. Humility opens up the door to reach people. Arrogance brings pride, brings destruction. It brings damnation. My people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, talk to me, communicate with me, commune with me, and wait for me to give them wisdom. Seek my face and turn from doing anything that's not of me. Even, board, even down to how you treat people. I don't care how much you know Torah. 
If you're not treating people like you're supposed to, like you are respectful, like you have like like the way he's giving you the instructions to if you have no care for other people's feelings or other people's well-being then it's not his people because even in Hamashiach rebuking he still was humble he still had a care for the Pharisees. And so much that he would even tell the Pharisees how to get back on the right track. If my people who represent my name, they should display a level of humility communion with the father waiting for him to respond and give wisdom to them and anything that is not of him they don't even entertain it why do we entertain foolishness why do we spend more time entertaining mess as the people of the Most High. We say we his people. We say we know his name. We say he speaks to us and we represent him. But we entertain foolishness. And we arrogant. And we don't put in the prayer time. And we don't wait patiently for him to guide us and give us instruction. But we too busy entertaining wickedness. And you love it. You love entertaining wickedness. Because wickedness is like cake to your flesh. It says, turn from entertaining foolishness. Then I will hear. I don't hear you if you arrogant. I don't hear you if you sitting there giving me a three, three minutes a day prayer and you give everybody else uh, 23 hours in the day. I don't hear you if you're not seeking me for wisdom, but you're seeking everybody else for wisdom. I don't respond and move. And I don't hear you when you're entertaining wickedness and foolishness. But if you're humble and if you talk to me, and you wait for me to respond to you. That's what's seeking my face, seeking his wisdom. And you stop entertaining foolishness. The reason you can't hear is because your ears too clogged up with everybody else's voice. Entertaining foolishness. Seeking others for wisdom. Talking to others more than you talk to me. And you're arrogant. Do you know a level of arrogance? Is knowing that you don't even put in the, don't even follow the instructions of what the father telling you and how to talk to him. And yet you expect or think he's supposed to move for you. More so than he's going to move for somebody else. Who's doing all the things that he requires them to do. That's arrogant. Because he's not a respecter of persons. But guess what he pays attention to? He pays attention to how faithful you are though. He's a respecter of faithfulness.
if my people who say they represent me would walk like my son, talk like my son, not being a respect of persons. Oh, I'm going, I'm going, you know, this is my eye over here, so I'm going to treat him good and I ain't going to talk about what he's doing that's wrong, but yet this person over here, I don't consider my eye, so therefore I'm going to blast them. That's a respect of persons. The most I don't deal like that. He's never dealt like that. That's why he gave one law for the stranger and for the home born. Because he's no respect of persons. He ain't come up with a law for Israel and a law for the Gentiles too. Especially if he's going to consider them one people being in obedience. We've created these barriers of this my act because of this. And everybody else, forget them and forget if it, it forget them and forget everything else if they ain't talking about what I'm talking about. How much shock didn't act like that? This is why the reason why I say it, people think I'm crazy when I say if we were living back then or he was living now, many of us couldn't walk with him. Many of us would actually be doing the same thing that every the other other person that was doing that was following the Pharisees who was against him. A whole lot of us would be trying to put him on the cross again. And folks think I'm crazy when I say that. But no, it's true. Because guess what? Even when you read the book of Acts, they say the same thing. Well, if we was back there with our fathers, we wouldn't have betrayed him. And the apostle said, you lying. Because you would have did the same thing. Because you act just like your fathers. You arrogant just like your fathers. You don't pray just like your fathers. And you don't seek wisdom from me just like your fathers. You only pray, okay, in drive-bys and when you get in trouble but you don't talk to me when it's going good and then when it's going bad you ain't seeking me for wisdom to get out your situation you'll create a whole nother situation and you still entertain wickedness just like your fathers they said it then in the book of Acts and they'll say it today and the apostle said it then, and we'll say it again today. You'll do just like your fathers. Because arrogance is what causes you to act like your fathers. It's because of the promise made to Abraham. It has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with the promise he made to Abraham. Why? It's because he is not a man that he should lie. He would not turn his back. His word does not return to him void. Once he sit up there and he brings it and makes a covenant and an agreement, That's it. You may turn your back on the Most High. But he ain't going to walk away from you. And we even hear, just, just look at how we talk about people. We're supposed to be the children of Israel. We say, that the Most High only speaks to us. He only deals with us. And we're a lot of thought, he has not done so with any other nation. We twist that and tear that up too. It's because of our arrogance, we can't get no revelation. We are, we're Israel. And brothers are like, man, why made why why made so hard on why made so hard on I, We hear this all I hear this all the time. Like. And then I ask the question, have you not read? 
You ain't read the whole. Have you not read the Old Testament? Why did Israel keep going into bondage, into slavery? It's because the Most High dealt with them based on the standard that they're supposed to be. If we're supposed to be a standard in the earth, we have an obligation. And as a big brother, I have an obligation to make sure that my siblings represent our father name correctly. So I'm going to be difficult and a little more tough than anybody. You live in the house. And it's a shame that the neighbors, it's a shame that the adopted children represent your father name more than you and you are blood. It's absolutely a shame. That our level of arrogance has pushed us to that point. To where the adopted children. Kids in the neighborhood come to your house. And they clean up your house. They say yes ma'am and yes sir to your mama. And you say yeah. Sucking your teeth. Because you're so arrogant and you have entitlement thinking. Listen what he says. He says, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin. I can't forgive your sin if you act in arrogant. Because guess what? Your arrogance gonna put you right back in the same boat again. We gonna be right back here in the same spot again. I'm gonna be talking to you about the same thing again. And we'll forgive their sin and will heal their land. I can't prosper you if you think you doing the work. Because if you can do it, then I'm going to step back. And when you catch hell, don't come to me. Don't come to me when you catching hell. This is verse 15. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. My eyes and my ears. Meaning that I'm going to be paying attention. I'm going to be at attention, I'm going to be watching, and I'm going to be listening. I am going to watch, and I'm going to listen. For now, have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. My eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Father said his eyes and his heart. He's always watching. And he's always making decisions. question is are your eyes always at attention watching and seeing how you can get closer to him and is your heart 
at attention, seeking him. Not your heart over here in 10 different places and with Yah. No, is your heart with him? Is your heart fully with him? Or are you just playing around? Because even playing around gets you exposed. Second Chronicles 36, 15 through 17. And the Lord God of their fathers sent them, sent to them by his messengers, rising up be times and sending because he had compassion. Even back then, before who we know as Christ came to the earth and put on flesh, even he had compassion in his glory. He had compassion on his people in his glory. So when he comes to the earth and put on flesh, that's not going to change. Because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God. They did it then. Which one of the prophets have your fathers not persecuted? Which one of the prophets in today's age is trying to turn your hearts back to the Father? Have you not talked about? Have you not gotten on the phone with others discussing and backbiting and talking about? Which one of the prophets have you not publicly came against? We're not talking about anybody. We're not just talking about any old body that just run around here and just say this, say, you know, call themselves a prophet and, and all. No, we're talking about those you know that the Father is with. When have you not? Sided with others. Against those who the Father has sent in your life. To speak in your life. Because they may have been blinded. By arrogance. The father is so compassionate that he send people in your life for a reason. To help you get to where you're trying to go. The way the father wants you to be. To bring you to a level of humility. So that he can hear and heal your land. Hear and heal your heart. Hear and prosper your hands. But as your forefathers once did, you even reject them even today. But they mocked the messengers. They mocked the messengers of Elohim and despised his words. We don't want to hear you talking about no compassion. We don't want to hear you talking about no compassion for them. They need to feel what we feel. And what we feel today. 
We don't want to hear nothing about no compassion, huh? They wronged me. We don't want to hear about no compassion, huh? And guess what? When it comes time for you, the most I gonna say, you didn't want to give nobody else no compassion. Ak, a cote. So therefore, where I would have given you compassion in your wrongfulness, I'm going to void it. And I'm going to treat you like I never knew you because of your lack of compassion and your level of arrogance. Same way you wanted compassion. And if you get in a situation now, you want somebody to be humble to help you. Always remember that eventually you're going to need the Father to send somebody your way. You're going to need the Father to send somebody your way. So let your arrogance fool you if you want. It always come back around. Listen, but they mock the messengers that God sent and they despise his words. They don't want to hear. Brother, you need to Turn from your wicked ways. Brother, you need to start. Brother, you need to make sure that your household and your family is first. Brother, hey, listen, the way you treat other people, the Hamashiach didn't do that. Sister, you need to stop gossiping so much. They despise the words. Despise the words. The prophets that were sent, the messengers that were sent was to help the people. But because of their arrogance, Arrogance will have you misinterpreting voices that are sent to help you. Your arrogance mixed with other arrogant voices in your ear will cause you to misinterpret voices who are sent to help you. And when you misinterpret those voices, you hurt yourself. You set up a roadblock for yourself. And when you get on the dead end road and there's nowhere to turn around, the same voice you'll hear in your ear. When they try to help you and stop you from going down a dead end road, you didn't want to listen. But once you get on that road, the same voices of arrogance will become deaf to your ears. Or your voice will become deaf to their ears. Because your voice will now be asking them for help and they won't be there.
and they despised his words and misused his prophets. Until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people. Till there was no remedy. There was when the wrath of the Lord rise against you, there is nothing that can cure that. There is nothing that can stop that. You had an opportunity to escape it. But you ignored the voices that were sent to help you. Therefore, he brought upon them the king of the Chaldeans who slew their young men. When you're disobedient, the father will use other people and other things to chastise you. You are misinterpreting the situation. We start blaming all the systems for our problem. And the reason why the wrath came in the first place. You're arrogant. You're not humble. You don't want to turn. You entertain wickedness. Therefore, the father sent messengers to warn you and tell you to get your act together. You don't want to listen. You misuse them. You dog them out. You talk about them and everything else. And all of a sudden, here comes hell hitting your house. And then you find ways to blame everything around you. Other than you ignoring the voice that was sent to help you. That's arrogance. Who slew their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary. And had no compassion when the Most High had compassion on you. Sending people to you to warn you. You rejected them. You didn't want to hear it. You despised the words. You misused and abused and abused his people or his messengers. And now when the wrath comes, the one that he's sending against you has no compassion because he didn't put it in them to have compassion when he's chastising you. Therefore, he brought up upon the king of the Chaldeans and slew their young men with the sword in their own in, in, in the house of their sanctuary and had no compassion upon the young man or maiden, old man, or him that stooped for age. He gave them all into his hands. The Most High gave them all into his hands. He didn't, doesn't that sound like Deuteronomy? Didn't care about the young or the old. This is a perpetual thing because of perpetual arrogance. So you want to be a perpetual arrogant people? Then I'm going to do what I said I would do in my word in every one of the captivities. This time in Chronicles, it's the sword. In our day and age, it's the gun. It's the gun. All because we didn't want to heed to the wisdom that was sent, to the compassion that was shown. And just like then, we do the same thing now. Arrogance will cause you not to admit your wrongs. Humility will have you on your knees pleading how wrong you were and pleading for the forgiveness of your creator. Arrogance Is the opposite. Arrogance find a way to blame everybody else.
Ain't nobody the problem but us. I know they ain't, nobody else probably ain't going to tell you that. Nobody is the problem. We are our problem. Because we're arrogant. We're arrogant. We say we know him. We say we represent him. We say that we speak on his behalf. And we're arrogant. We don't pray. We don't seek wisdom from him. And we always entertaining wickedness and foolishness. We are carnal with a name tag on that says Israel. And I leave you with a shalom.